guys. Welcome. Can you believe it to week four of the retreat? We've done four weeks of this. It's really been an amazing experience. Um, it's probably the most consistent work life I've ever had. <laughs> And I love it, you know, it's like, okay, I'm getting up, what am I doing today? And all of it surrounds around health and wellness. And, you know, I just want to talk about gratitude in terms of that, that we have chosen health and wellness in our life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and that we're taking time to do it. Because without that, what is life? If we just go to work, we just come home, we run through the motions, whatever they are, you know, what are we living for? And this week we start the heart chakra, which is a super powerful chakra. The color is green. The sound I love, it's Y-A-M, yam. And I always eat and laugh because what do we say when food is delicious? Yum, right? And when food is good and comes from the heart, like it's how we commune in this life. We gather and we share food and it's yum. <laughs> so I really love that. Um, one thing I also really particularly like about the heart chakra is if you can see its symbolism, I'll take you over to my chakra board here. The symbolism, if you can see that um, triangle in the middle pointing up and down, uh, what that talks about is the unification of that which comes from the earthly plane or our root, and that which comes from the celestial plane combining the heart is the center of that. And what does it say? My heart is open to receive the energy of love. I radiate this essence. I walk my path with ease and grace. So the thing I love about that symbolism is because, I mean, you know, there are all sorts of romance of love. Some of it, when we think of love, we tend to go straight to the romantic love, but there's also friendship and familial and community and earth and animal and all the different varieties of what love is. And when we talk about it in the Sanskrit way of the celestial and the earth, what it is to me is that perfect balance of what love should be, you know, whatever that love is, that groundedness, that truth in self, as we went through the, our root, we never move from our root or our core, because from there, that is our truth, that is our essence, and everything can emanate out of it. If you compare it to a physiological term, think about even the way the body is constructed, what is our main Thing that holds us from our center. It's our spine. Our spine goes from top to bottom, bottom to top, and from that every single nerve ending comes out. That is the truth of emotionally and spiritually where we should try to come from in every day of our life. Um, I spend a lot of time and money on therapy. If anybody needs a good recommendation in terms of, she really helped me with romantic love. We were talking about it and uh, her name's Linda Hudson, FYI. Tell her I sent you. <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, the idea is to be a secure. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm secure. She said, no, 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 no not being secure in, in terms of confidence, although to, that is important, but to be a secure. And what that means is no matter who's saying what or doing what, you're always knowledgeable in your truth, in your center, in your core, right? And like our spine, like this heart, the double triangle, that core, that center, it transcends everything. And when we do find a good relationship, whatever that relationship is, all the ones I named before, even animal love, hey, Maui dog, um, there's something called a, a Venn diagram, V-E-N-N -N diagram, Venn diagram. And what it is is two concentric circles that have mostly their own space but overlap in the middle. And that overlapping in the middle, to me, is the perfect description of what any relationship 
should be or can be because should is a funny word. It should, it's like potential, like, oh, it exists, but until we put it into action, it's just something ephemeral. But what it is and represents is that each person is still individual in their truth and in their self. Every relationship in its truth and in itself. And then there is that combined familiarity, that combined togetherness. And I was mentioning that to one of my friends and she didn't actually hear me say the word Venn diagram. And she said, oh, Zen diagram. So uh, trademark right now, Zen diagram for the perfect relationships in life. So as the, we explore the heart chakra this week, there's going to probably be a, maybe a lot of things that come up because we're going into our heart. And the things that block us from being in our true self, the heart chakra is compassion, love, acceptance, appreciation of beauty. What typically stops that is the damage our heart has been through in our life, all of us. Every single person on this whole weird planet, our life will be a battered heart. That's just all there is to it. We have battered hearts, and I'm not sure what that lesson is for this lifetime or why we have it. It's just the truth of what exists. There's no person on this planet who, if we have sympathy and compassion, heart doesn't feel like ours. The other day I was walking at my favorite forest preserve, it's just up the road, and I saw this woman, I said good morning to this guy, and then I passed this woman, and she turned to me, and she still gave me a moment to greet me, just like good morning, but as I looked at her, I don't know what happened, but she was crying. She was in obvious emotional sadness and pain, and the first thing I did was just place my hand on my heart because I felt her sadness and compassion because I know what that sadness and compassion feels like. It, it hurts. We have that and we all do. There's a word, it's called sonder. Sonder. And what sonder is, is when we look at someone and we realize they have a whole life, a whole story that we're able to connect to them and who they are and that compassion. And if we can, come continually to that heart center in our groundedness and security because her sadness is her sadness and I have compassion for her sadness, but it is not my job to take on other people's sadness. I can only deal with mine and heal myself because only I know. And I saw this beautiful meme the other day it said, one of the best things I learned as an adult is to ask, are you venting and just need an ear? Or do you want me to respond and give you advice? Okay, I'm going to read, say it again because I think it's so powerful. Are you just venting and you need an ear to listen to? Or do you want me to respond and give advice? Because it's such a different thing, but whether either of those things occur, that heart passion, that empathy, that giving, you can only share if you filled up your own cup. One of the practices that we'll do this week that's gonna be a challenge because it's just a challenge for everyone is I'm gonna make you probably in the meditation tonight think of a person or creature that made completely happy. Usually I do a person because it's more connected to then who we are, but I ask people to think, okay, think of a person. Okay, let's all do this quickly as a quick practice. Now think of one characteristic, a trait, their personality that you really like about that person. Okay, can be anybody. Let's just think about that person. Think about some of the things they do that make you feel like you love them and you appreciate them for it. Only that. All right. Now think of another person and think about their physical beauty. Admire them for their physical beauty. Like really explore them in your mind, see their body or whatever it is specifically that you're looking at. All right. And now you're ready for your mind to go like this. Think of yourself. 
Can you come up with a characteristic or trait in yourself that you really love? Period. Because when you thought of that other person, did you think, well, I love the way they are so funny, but blah, 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 blah. I love the way they're always there for me, but blah, 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 blah. Right? Now I said, okay, think of something in yourself. Was it easier? All right. Now I'm about to put you through the ringer. So I asked you to think of someone's physical characteristic that you loved, period, or admired, period. Now do that for yourself. Whoa. <laughs> right? It's so much harder. And that's the thing, that balance, that triangle, whatever it is, that love from above, that love from below, that perfect balance of give, receive. Being in your centeredness, being in your core, being in your truth, it's a hard place. I, I understand. We all do because we're all going through that. Everyone you meet has that sad, battered heart and the heart that can soar and glow even you. So what can you do to make your heart soar and glow? What are the people you can surround yourself with, the experiences you can surround yourself with? Because again, once your cup runneth over, there's enough to share with everybody. On the contrary, what are the things blocking you from being that warmth, that glow, that, that yin, that yang, that that sky, that earth into that perfect Zen diagram. So what I'm going to give you guys, we're going to move into the body awakening in just a few minutes. So does anybody have any thoughts, questions, comments, or do you want a few moments to just sit with that? Just sit with it. I thought so. I saw everybody sigh and faces. Yep. Sky hearts, I can't, I, see, I'm only half a heart because otherwise I'd drop my computer. Here, let's all do hearts together in the center. Hearts together in the center. <laughs> all right. Have a beautiful day. Hopefully I'll see some of you throughout the day today for this amazing week number four. And uh, yeah, just spend some time. Don't judge. Don't be harsh. Don't let that feel sad just acknowledge it you know that's a healthy heart flow i acknowledge my feelings i see them i they serve me and i release them breath ah one more because it feels so good ah. <laughs> all right y'all see you later